calling the trustees meeting on May 27th, 2020 to order at 1 p.m. Okay, so on the agenda today we have, um, we'll set up with the reopening plan. So I'd sent you all a copy of a draft. Um, I don't know if you want to kind of go around and see if there was any changes, suggestions, anybody want to make uh, any further ones. I know Linda did have some, but um, we can kind of go around and see if there's anything anybody wants to change. Um, I thought myself, everything looked great. Um, I thought the part-time hours looked good. I had already mentioned to you, do we have one day set aside for seniors or do we have an hour every day? Just a thought. Um, I think the best thing, like everyone has said, you take it slow and you evaluate the time as it goes by. Now, each phase lasts three weeks, is that correct? I think at least, and then they, you yeah. have to revise it depending on what the numbers show. Right. But it's at least three weeks. So, I mean, I think you've done a thorough job. I like the sheet that um, was added by Linda. Um, I guess right now that's all I have to say. I'd like to hear what others have to say. Okay. Um, did you want to go, Linda? Okay. Um, yes, I did think it was very thorough. Um, after the governor's report came out last week, I mentioned to Karen the state did put out some sample reopening library um, policies, MBLC. <laughs> and you looked at ours in comparison, and we were right on the money. So Karen did a wonderful job. Um, I did have a couple thoughts though, and um, some, I guess, start with a couple wording thoughts, um, if I could, and then maybe um, not sure about procedures and um, some other things, but maybe start with the wording suggestions, if that's all right. Yeah. And uh, the bold, in any phase, the library will implement the following. <clears throat> I thought perhaps instead of continue to allow staff to work remotely when it makes sense from an operational staff safety perspective, maybe just simplify it to say continue the option of allowing staff to work remotely. Um, and that gives some leeway and might not be as subjective and um, I don't know how you feel about that. It's just simpler and allows more yeah. options, perhaps. Okay. So it would be continue the option of allowing staff to work remotely. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, I don't want to get into what staff can work remotely and what is it. And I think this is um, more flexible, perhaps. And, you know, does that have to bring up questions? And then down to bullets. Um, place social distancing markers at six foot intervals and specify directions for the flow of traffic. And then after traffic, I thought you might put both outside and within the building. I think we're going to need some guidance signage and for outside yeah. as well as inside. Okay. Good point. Okay. And then I don't know if this is where you'd address it. Maybe under the um, last big bold bullet, would we want to put something like waive library fines for the foreseeable future? Yeah, um, I mean, we are practically doing that anyway until further notice, but we can certainly put it in here so that um, it's clear to people. Okay, I think so. Yeah, um, there's a lot of good reasons, I think, and it was an MBLC rec. Um, Okay. So, like, wave late fees until further notice. Does that sound? Yeah. Someone have some birds outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, all right, Karen, we talked. I, my last email with you, phase two, um, that if deemed safe by guidelines, um, yeah, bullet, deadline to be removed. Yeah. Yeah, about I public access. 
computers. Yeah. That's going to be removed. Yep. And Karen inserted something in the latest draft on phase three. Okay. Those are the only suggested changes I have. Um, I, did, I, I think, um, do we address interlibrary loan at all? Um, well, some of, the, some of the things I felt were, um, like if we're getting kind of down into more procedural, that that was gonna kind of have to not, not make it up as we go along, but kind of be like left really flexible for based on, you know, what staff we have, what they're comfortable with, how we can see how the you know, feasibility of our workflow. Um, okay. So some of the things I felt like could be left out um, and that we kind of work on that as we were here working. Um, but if you feel like we we should add it in somewhere, but I, I didn't really have a specific plan for it yet because I wasn't sure how it was gonna work. We'd have to kind of see how staff um, can work in the building together. We don't really have that experience yet. What is the option from the loan perspective at this point? Is it available if we wanted it? Well, right now the delivery system is shut down still. So there's no um, there's no interlibrary loan right now. Um, we I don't know what the plans are. They're still working things out with the delivery side. So we don't have any set um, information about when they might start off or how it's gonna look like. Um, so I mean it would definitely be like a phase two or three, but I'm not sure yet which which it would be. Right. Um, I know yesterday um, I saw briefly in the, the book club and one of the participants was asking in relation to that. So I don't know if we could put something vague down um, that interlibrary loan will be suspended at least through stage one. I don't know, just to... Um, People are looking for answers, I think. I don't yeah. know. I, I see your point too. So I could go either way. It's just a thought. And I mean, I felt too like it felt fell in with um, when we have like core circulation tasks and in phase two and phase right. three. I think something about that that it would kind of fall under that as well. So okay, um, I'm good with not addressing it. Um, and um, one thing MBLC did say. Um, and this is off a little, I guess, while I'm talking, though, um, to address if we needed additional computers, maybe laptops for staff, so they wouldn't have to be switching users of the computers for circulation or anything. Is that a concern, or how do you feel? Uh, we about do have that? one laptop that we can have staff use. So um, if they feel like the desks are too close, we can have somebody use the laptop elsewhere in the library. Um, I feel like that probably would be sufficient for now for staff. Um, I'm just thinking when we move it to computers for patrons, that that would be an issue for, you know, we would want to get some for patrons to use more rather than mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did recently um, get an accounting, accounting of the foundation expenditures. Um, mm -hmm. This year so far, there was a Build-A-Bear or something that I can get you the figures, Karen. But I think that might be an appropriate use for some of the um, foundation funds that were budgeted for you, um, your discretion. Just a thought. It is your discretion. <laughs> but, um, okay. Um, I think that's all on the plan. On the hours, um, I did see on the MBLC too, they suggested that um, you do a test run before the curbside checkout and all. And maybe along those lines, as well as a test run, it would be good to try the hours on a shortened basis and as appropriate increase the hours of day one even. Um, it might be a lot more demanding than it appears perhaps, I don't know. That's right. That, well, the, the hours that I sent you were for curbside, um, and right. I kind of tried to make it so that we would have at least three to four staff in the building working. Um, we are going to kind of have to see how it goes. We are going to have staff here probably for at least several days before we do the curbside um, to see and then and kind of talk over the procedures together. Um, but I think we are going to just kind of have to try, so, you know, see how it goes and if we need to um modify it 
as we go along, you know, we'll have to do that. But um, so we are going to kind of do some sort of like a test a little at the beginning to see how it goes. Okay. So you think these hours are okay, even initially, you wouldn't want to do a trial run for shortened hours even and expand it after you see how it goes? Um, no, I, I'm, I think I'm comfortable with what the ones I was okay. going to propose. Um, I mean, we can talk okay. about that. I mean, we should probably finish with the other, see what you know, Pam and Joanne have to say about the document, then we can go back and talk more about the hours. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, Pam, did you have anything you want to add about the plan? Um, no, actually, I, I, I think it was pretty straightforward. I think you covered everything. Um, uh, Corinne obviously mentioning about maybe having a, a, an hour set aside for seniors, possibly if, if that's feasible. But I think also with what you said about, you know, being careful, the, the wording, a lot of this, like they said, it's, it's very fluid, you have to adapt. So you have to kind of play it by ear and, and set kind of loose boundaries and see how it goes. But I, I think pretty much you, you've covered everything. And I think you've afforded us in your wording flexibility to change or adapt if we need to. So, okay. Thanks, uh, Joanne. Did you have anything to add? I, I just think just to say that you've done an incredible job of um, putting all this together with a really challenging situation. And I am sure I think that you've done a great job. But I think that you're probably going to have more challenges ahead of you, and you'll just have to face them as you come each day. And I'm sure there will be many. But the way you've handled it so far, I trust that you will continue to handle it in the same professional way. Great job, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely great job. And all without oh. an assistant. <laughs> Mention something Linda um, said now, it'll come back to me. I mean, we can always, as the first week goes by, and um, I mean, every day you can, it's probably a good idea to evaluate each day as it comes along so you can make, um, any changes or maybe pull back on something. Um, the, yeah, I would not, well, I think we all want to have hours for the senior, whether we might do a day or, or an hour every morning or something. Oh, there was something else Linda said that I wanted to. Yeah. Well, I do think, I think that's a good idea too, seniors. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and I think, you know, Linda also said about the outside, which we all agree with that. One thing I wanted to One know. Thing I wanted to... Hello? Want to say something? Oh, okay. Um, when people come in, we have the door they enter to the library. Will all the, when the seniors start to go back, will they be entering that side door only? They would go in their, the, the main senior center entrance, I would expect. They wouldn't come in our entrance okay. if they were going to the senior so center. If you're in that little courtyard there where the picnic table is, we library patrons will enter the door on the right and seniors will enter the door on the left? That's, yes, that's what I would expect, yeah. yeah. All right. And I assume like on the um, community room, there'll be signs that it's not available? Yeah, and we were going to try to get um, a caution tape or something similar that um, okay. could, we could block off areas um, okay. just to make sure people didn't move the areas we don't want them to be in. So, How about the public bathrooms? Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that when we start moving into phase two and three, we're going to have to think about. Um, that was actually a topic of discussion on one of the library listservs, um, kind of people going back and forth, like what are people doing? How is it sort of like use at your own risk? Um, you know, what, you know, there was not really a consensus that I could see if people had different ideas. Um, but that's, you know, I'll kind of look back at that once we're ready to plan for that for the next few phases and see kind of okay. what we, can, you know, what we can do to make things safe. Okay. Karen, I, uh, I just yeah. have one quick question. I'm sorry. So when you said you you were debating on what you were going to do about the the public restrooms, did you say that was part of phase two? Um, well, yeah, because once we open to the public, obviously we're going to have okay. to figure out if people are going to okay. need to use the bathroom. How are we going to you know? Right. I just want to make sure I get it for the notes. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
on limiting uh, or deciding how long someone can be in the library, do you think 30 minutes is fair? I think that might be fair, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I we so. are going to be doing our curbside and, you know, people are going to be able to put holds on online. They can do a lot of stuff from home to prep so that they don't have to come and browse for, you know, for too long. Um, right. So. And maybe when you start announcing this on Facebook, you can put in something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, ask the people. You want to take care of the community, but we're asking them to work with us in a way. And right. we'd appreciate you um, so forth. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember what Linda said. It was something to do with the MBLC. And I assume that they will be sending information out about the interlibrary loan. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's a uh, Massachusetts library system that you can actually so, show. Um, okay. If you have any information, they'll send that out. Right. So, since right now we're not doing anything, it probably maybe in case three or four, eventually it will get. Or maybe they're just going to but I think we will hear and we'll get be given good direction. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. With any question. other? Oh yeah. Um, how do we proceed with this now? Usually, um, according to by bylaws, we would vote our next um, meeting approval of the plan. But prior to that. Um, did you have anyone in mind to review the plan? I know before we did our computer use um, internet plan, the town council reviewed it. Um, had you thought about other people, town administrator, town council? I, I, I did send them a copy and they they were happy with it. Um, there was no nothing that they had to suggest to changes or anything, so. Uh, what do you think about asking town council to review it where it is so critical and important? Yep. You know, I can go through the town administrator, but explain how we did this for previous policies, such as the internet use, and ask if that would be a possibility. Yep, I can definitely do that, yeah. Okay, thank you. So then the next meeting would be to vote. Yes. Correct. Am I hearing you correctly? Okay, thank you. Okay, so do we want to move on to ours? Um, so, like I said, the hours that I'd sent, um, the Monday, Friday, 9 to 3, Tuesday, Thursday, 12 to 4, and Wednesday, Saturday, 9 to 1, would be for curbside pickup. And we would have three to four staff in the building at any given time. Um, I came up with these hours based on several factors. So, one, obviously, is the number of hours that staff typically work in a week. I had, you know, was constrained um, by, you know, I couldn't have people go over hours that they normally work. Um, and based on what I thought we could handle, in terms of, you know, we don't want too many people in the building at once for safety, but we don't want too few because then we wouldn't be able to um, provide the services, fit, you know, quickly enough for curbside and things like that. Um, there was also a factor. Um, I don't, Diana had mentioned um, that she had mentioned possibly evening hours. And I didn't include any because right now I felt like, um, you know, Brian, the custodian, comes in around 4, 4.30. And I wanted to give him the maximum number of hours since he's so limited already. I wanted to maximum, maximize his hours. So, and I felt like if he was trying to be here, and he's going to focus on cleaning. So if he was here cleaning and we, you know, we were, other staff were in the building, that you know, I didn't think that would work very well. So I was trying to get Steph out by four um, so that he could come in and clean you know, like he does four to seven, four to eight, um, Monday to Friday. So um, another factor, I mean, we do have Saturday hours. So I thought that oh, might be- I thought that might be- That um, you know, we couldn't make it during the afternoon. Um, they, you know, during the week, they could come on Saturday. So we have nine to one for that. But I don't know if anybody had, um, any thoughts on that? I like what you said about having Brian have the space to himself when he needs to clean. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, agree. <clears throat> I agree too. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we seem to be happy with the those hours that I suggested. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then, like I said, it's just a start. I mean, we can always, once, you know, uh, more staff can come in, we can, you know, alter them, um, expand them back to what they, um, are, you know, our normal hours, um, slowly. So uh, I don't know if you need to vote to change them or I'm not sure if, um, I mean, if they're, well, I as long as should, in our normal hours, but. I think we should, um, I think we should ca call for a vote that it's temporary mm -hmm. um, or for the, the current uh, climate, you know, um, that we need to adjust the hours until further notice. So um, if I could have someone make a motion, please. I move that um, the hours of operation be adjusted to what Karen had sent us um, until further notice. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Oh. Maybe uh, once uh, the <laughs> library is. What did you say, Linda? Maybe once the library is reopening. <laughs> Not immediately. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Um, I'll, um, to see who's in favor. Joanne. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sam. Yes. Linda. Yes. Marine. Yes. So all in favor. Okay. All right. So was there anything else anybody wanted to? bring up um I just had the one thing I started to talk to you about beforehand um my girlfriend and her the company she works for um she has to do a, uh, find a lot of these products for cleaning and whatnot and she came across the site that she thought the library could use and she just sent me a text it's called nano septic and they have a lot of items especially for children she said um, like, for example, um, well, most of our doors are open, but like when we go to the bath, use the bathroom, they have door handle covers. And um, there's like this crystal bead inside that keeps it sand. So I thought maybe you might want to check it out, Karen. To see. I'm going to check it out myself. But to see if there's anything that you might be interested in. Um, further along. Um, I wanted to ask you, Linda, the money from the foundation, how much is it right now that Karen can use? I would have to check. I can email everyone. Um, go ahead. Okay. All right. I did it in my own I really feel if you need to have an extra laptop, please get one because um it just might make it easier overall almost to have a spare yeah and then um of course whatever extra supplies you need, whether it's from this company or your or someone else we were going to leave it up to you of course um but i just thought i'd show it out there about that. all right um so is there anything else or? um i had a couple things if i could yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, MBLC also said that, um, like we talked about having the policy. Um, are you, are you, did you show it to the Board of Health already? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm maybe it has something that is static. Did you show up? Did you show up? Plan to the Board of Health, Karen. I'm sorry, did I what? Um, share the proposed plan with the Board of Health also. Um, I sent it to the town administrator and asked him to send it to them. So, oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, and once we approve the um, plan, it said from MBLC that libraries must be able to self certify compliance of mandatory standards when they open. So um, those are all on the MBLC website, I believe, but um, we can't just go right ahead. I 
just you have to I think they are, but um there are procedures, I guess. Yeah, well, there yeah. was one line that had sent out. I know there's some st uh, staff training component, and they had sent out some videos that um, would qualify. So I did send those to the staff to have them view those. So that is one okay. aspect um, that we do need to do. I've sent that out to the staff. Mm -hmm. it just seems like there's so much, it's overwhelming. And I mentioned in an email to you, um, Karen, that um, some of our policies, library policies, have to be updated. Um, and I can, there is a um, sample pandemic policy for libraries to ad adapt and um, patron use policy from the MBLC. And these are just samples that we could adapt program, collection, circulation, meeting room use. Mm -hmm. But um, all these policies at some point, when feasible, um, yeah. do have to be updated. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. Do you see any foreseeable time frame on that? Or are there other priorities that have to be put in place first? Yeah, I mean, I, think, I, mean, I, you know, I work on policies as fast as I can, but um, mm -hmm. there's oftentimes a lot of other things that come in and pushes them out of, you know, back. So, um, I mean, I don't know if we can maybe just do a, like a kind of a blanket one in terms of, saying you know have have some sort of a pandemic policy that would modify other ones although you're not specifically modifying them i don't, I, I can definitely take a look at it and see um you know, get some input from other libraries as well what they're doing um so i'll definitely up to that at some point in the next couple of weeks okay and the trustees don't micromanage but um some of the procedures um are you going to have like the board of health and review those they're so critical at this point um how are you yeah, something that you know we feel that we're kind of questionable on that you know based, we don't have any like we don't have any guidance on it from elsewhere you know i definitely would certainly check with them like you i agree that it's, you know, it's vital to make sure that we're, we're following proper procedures recommended but even something like the procedure for curbside pickup um mm -hmm. are you just going to develop it and have staff input or how do you expect to proceed on that yeah i mean i've already said that we're going to be you know staff are going to be wearing gloves um and obviously masks we're going to um be using paper bags that's what is recommended because um they feel like it lasts less um sh less chance of it lasting longer on paper rather than plastic um you know we're going to be um you know kind of following what other libraries are doing in terms of you know obviously there's no, going to be no contact, you know, putting the bag outside for people to pick up, scheduling it, um, and, you know, quarantining items that are being returned so that when we do put them back into circulation, if somebody else wants to check it out, it's been quarantined. Um, so, we, you know, we're definitely going to be following other guidelines from what other libraries are doing, what uh, boards of health and MBLC have said. Okay, and you're following established guidelines for sanitizing and cleaning and everything? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Okay. Karen, you can um, go to John first, and then certain things you might be able to say okay, and then go to the others you can go to or out. Right. Even um, something like Shaw, they have a good system going there. Um, touch base with that manager as far as monitoring on the outside, just to give you, because that's been approved. Um, chat with him, it's, then it's also a way to make a connection with someone in the community. Um, so, you know, if you'd like to yeah, is there anything else? No, well, I guess I would thank everyone. Um, Carrie, you did an amazing job, it's so extensive and critical. Probably done a year's work in just kind of. I have no idea what you were getting into, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we certainly appreciate it, and it's a thorough, thorough job. Thank you. Yeah. I'm. I'm honestly. I'm. I'm glad, even though this wasn't planned. I'm. I'm 
obviously none of it was planned. I'm glad you're in charge of it, Karen, because I couldn't think of anybody better, honestly. I totally agree. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, make a motion that the trustees meeting of May 27th, 2020 is adjourned at 1.30 p.m. Who seconded? Second, second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. <laughs> so we'll see you soon. I'll talk to you soon. All right. <laughs> Thank you.